Hello there, welcome to the GCSE revision video. Here we're looking at simultaneous equations. So let's remind ourselves what we can do with simultaneous equations. So you can multiply equations by a number, but make sure you multiply the whole equation by that number. So let me show you an example. If we've got the equation something like 2x plus 3y equals 9, then we can multiply the whole of that equation by, for example, 2, as long as we multiply all the numbers by 2, and it will remain an equivalent equation. So uh, multiply the 2 by 2, you get 4. Multiply the 3 by 2, you get 6. Multiply the 9 by 2, you get 18. And these two equations here are equivalent equations. They're the same equation, just one is a scale factor of the other. Or you can multiply it by 3, for example. So 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. So as long as you're making sure that you multiply all the numbers in your equation by that scale factor, you get the same equation. Or for example, you might be able to do it by 10. So yeah, so make sure you multiply all the numbers in the equation by that same scale factor, and you'll get an equivalent equation. But with simultaneous equations, we have two equations. So what you can actually do with simultaneous equations is if you have two equations, you can multiply the equation by different values. So for example, if we had one equation of 7x plus 4y equals 15, and another one of 3x plus 6y equals 13, then we can multiply the top one by 3 and the bottom one by 7. We don't have to multiply both equations by the same number. So what we might choose to do is to make the x's equivalent I'll multiply the 7x by 3 to make it 21x, and the 3x down here by 7 to make that 21x. And then there's a technique that you can use in simultaneous equations to cancel out the numbers. So you multiply different equations by different numbers so that you can create a variable where you have the same number at the front of it. It might be the x one or it might be the y one. But you can multiply the different equations by different numbers. And you can add or subtract one equation from another. Do this in columns. So x is first, then the y's, then the number afterwards. So for example, let me show you. Let's do 7x plus 4y equals 15, and 3x plus 6y equals 13. Then we can add these equations together. We'll do it in the columns. So we'll do the x's first. 7x plus 3x is 10x. 4y plus 4y, 4y plus 6y is 10y and 15 add 13 is 28. So you add equations together in their columns. This hasn't really led to much here. We've now just got that 10x plus 10y equals 28. And you could also subtract equations one from the other. So you make sure you do the top one, take away the bottom one in all cases. So it's going to be 7 take away the 3x, that would be 4x. So 7x take away 3x is 4x. 4y take away 6y, well that will actually be a negative 2y there, and then 15 take away 13, that will give us 2. So there we are. So you can add and subtract equations one from the other. So these are the different strategies you can use to help solve your simultaneous equations. But let's get stuck into a question now where we can see it in action. So pause the video and give this question here a go. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, do the answer to this then. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll call equation 1, equation 1, and equation 2, equation 2. And I can see here that I've got my two y's equaling each other. So it's 2y here and 2y here. So if I subtract these equations, then the y's will disappear. So I need to do equation 1, take away equation 2. And I'm always going to be writing down what I'm doing on the side here so that the examiner knows exactly what I'm doing. So it's 1 take away 2, so it's 3x take away x, now we do it in the columns, 3x take away x is 2x. Uh, 2y take away 2y cancels out, which is very helpful, and 1 take away 5 is minus 4. Remember, you've got to take away it in order, not just the highest number, take away the lowest number. And now we've got a little equation here of 2x equals minus 4. And that's really helpful because now we can work out what x is. We've eliminated the y variable. That's why this is sometimes called simultaneous equations by elimination. We've eliminated the y variable. The next thing to do would be to divide both sides by 2. So x equals minus 2. Voila. So we've got half of our answer now. We need to work out what x is, then we work out what y is, or maybe the other way around. But we need to work out what one of them is, then we work out the other one. 
So what I'm now going to do is looking back at my two equations, I'm going to take the easiest one and that will be equation 2. So what I'm now going to do is replace x with minus 2 and then write out the rest of the equation. And now I've got another little equation that needs solving. So I'm going to add the 2 onto the other side because it's a minus 2 at the moment. So 2y equals 7. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I get y equals 3.5. And there we are. That's the answer to this question. x equals 2, y equals 3.5. There we are. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so again, I'm going to call the top one equation 1 and the bottom one equation 2. And I can see here again, I've got the y's that are equal to each other. So I can just do equation 1, take away equation 2. I always like to do the highest amount of x's, take away the lowest amount of x's. That makes the maths easier later on. So 5x take away x, we'll do the take away in the column now. So 5x take away x is 4x. y take away y will cancel out. And 17 take away 3 is 16, no, 14. So the next thing to do will be to divide by 4. So to divide by 4, I'll half it and then half it again. Half of 14 is 7, half of 7 is 3.5. So 3.5 is my value for x. So that's half of my answer. Now I need to go and find the other half. I'm going to take the easier of the two equations, that for me is equation 2, and put in x equals 3.5. So I'm going to rewrite out equation 2, replacing x with 3.5. So 3.5, and then write out the rest of it, plus y equals 3. And I'm now going to move the 3.5 onto the side by subtracting it. So y equals minus 0.5. And there we are, that's the whole answer now. So x equals 3.5 and y equals minus 0.5. Good, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here, we'll start off by calling the first one equation 1 and the second one equation 2. Now this is a perfect example where if we look at the y's, and this time, instead of subtracting them, I add them together, the y's will cancel out, because a minus 2y add a 2y will cancel out. So this time, instead of subtracting, I'm going to add my equations together. So it's going to be x add x is 2x. Minus 2y add 2y, that will cancel out, because one's a positive, one's a negative. And then add the numbers on the right-hand side, 6 add 0 is 6. So therefore, we've now got ourselves a little equation where we can divide by 2, and we get x equals 3. Let's now put this back into the easier of the two equations. So let's pick the second one, because um, that does look easier. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite out the equation, but with x as 3 inside it. So 3 plus 2y equals 0. Let's now, we need to solve this now, so we're going to take away 3 onto the other side. 0 take away 3 is minus 3, and then divide by 2. So y equals minus 1.5. So there we are, that's the whole answer then. x equals 3, y equals minus 1.5. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Right, okay, this question is a difficult question here, so we'll call this equation 1 and this one equation 2. Now we can see on the x's here, the x's are equal. So I'm going to do 1 take away 2, because then I'll be doing 3x take away 3x, which will be leave us with no x's left. So that's exactly what we want to do. We'll work out what y first is this time, and then uh, we'll work out what the um, x is afterwards. So, difficult question this one, let me show you why. It's going to be 3x take away 3x. Well, that's not the hard bit. 3x take away 3x is just 0x's, so we won't write anything. But the next bit, the next bit's a difficult bit here, because what we're going to be doing now is y take away, because that's what we want to do between our equations, take away the number minus 4y. 
So minus 4y. And the question is, how do you do y minus minus 4y? Well, when you've got a double negative like this here, you do y plus 4y. So the answer to this uh, second column here is 5y. And then on the numbers row, it's numbers column, it's going to be minus 4 take away 6. So that will be going even more into the negative. That's not a double negative. That's minus 4 and go 6 into the negative even more. So that will give us minus 10. So minus 10 is the answer on the other side of the equation. Let's divide both sides by 5 now. So it's going to be y equals minus 2. So that's half of my answer, y equals minus 2. Let's now use equation 1 to substitute this into. It's going to be 3x, and then replace y with minus 2. So minus 2 equals minus 4. So in this question here, now we need to add 2 onto the other side to move the negative 2 onto the other side. Minus 4 add 2 is minus 2. And then divide by 3. So I'm going to get x equals minus 2 thirds as my answer for x. So my answer in total is x equals minus 2, y equals minus 2. OK, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here. Very difficult question because of this double negative that happened on the y variable. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question here, we'll call the first one equation 1 and the first second one equation 2. And this is a perfect question where I can see I've got 5 on both of my d values. So 5 is being multiplied by d on both of them, uh, but one's a positive 5 and one's a negative 5. So how would I cancel these two letters out? Well, I'm going to cancel them out by adding the equations together. Because when you add a positive and a negative 5 together, they cancel out to 0. So I'm going to be adding my equations because 1 is positive 5d and 1 is negative 5d. So let's do that in the columns then. So we're adding. So c add 4c is 5c. 5d add minus 5d is 0d. And on the other side, minus 13 add 48. Well, that's kind of like 48 minus 13, which will give us 35. So dividing both sides by 5 now, I get C equals 7. So that's half of my answer. Let's now move on to the next part. So I'll pick out equation 1 because that looks easier. I'm going to do C, which is 7. Add and the rest, write out the rest of the equation, 5D equals minus 13. To solve this, I need to move the 7 onto the other side first. So 5d, um, subtract 7, which is minus 20. And then divide by 5, divide by 5, and I get d equals minus 4. So there we are, that's the full answer now. c equals 7, and d equals minus 4. OK, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question here, first of all, we'll start off by labelling equation 1 with equation 1, equation 2 with equation 2, as always. Right, so let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got the y's already matching up. One's a positive, one's a negative. So we know what to do now when we've got one positive, one negative um, letter with the same number in front. We add the equations together because adding something that's positive and negative will cancel out the letter. So let's add in the columns. 3x add 7x, that's 10x. 5y add minus 5y. Well, when you add 5y add minus 5y, you get 0. That cancels out. So we can eliminate the y's. And then 6 add minus 11, that gives us minus 5. So divide both sides by 10. And we get x equals minus 0.5. So that's the answer for x. Let's now put it back into one of the equations. I think equation 1 looks slightly easier. So this is half of our answer so far. It's going to be 3 times x. So 3 times 0 0.5 is minus 1.5. And then add 5y equals 6. Let's now solve this. Let's move the minus 1.5 onto the other side by adding it. Add 1.5 to both sides. And we'll get 7.5.
and then divide both sides by 5, and we get y equals, do any calculator if you need to, y equals 1.5. So there we are, that's the answer for these two questions here. One, uh, one is uh, minus 0 0.5, one is 1.5. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, in this question here, equation 1 is called equation 1, equation 2 is called equation 2, and we're getting familiar with this now. When it's minus and a plus on the two y's here, we add our equations together because that's how we'll get the two uh, the letters here to cancel out. So 5x add 4x is 9x. Uh, minus 2y add 2y cancels out because when you add those two things together they cancel and 9.5 add 13 uh, add 13 uh, let's just do it quickly on the calculator to make sure I don't make a mistake 9.5 add 13 is 22.5 let's now divide both sides by 9 I'm going to do that on the calculator as well just to make sure I don't make a mistake divide by 9 and I get 2.5 x equals 2.5. So that's half of our answer. We now need to go and find the other half. I'm going to use equation 2 to do that because it looks slightly easier. Uh, I can choose. It doesn't matter which of the equations you use. 4 times 2.5, that'll make it 10. Add 2y equals 13. Uh, let's now solve this. So we need to move the 10 on the other side. So we'll subtract 10. So 2y equals 3. And then we divide both sides by 2, so we get y equals 1.5. So there we are, that's the answer for this question here. x equals 2.5, y equals 1.5. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Right, okay, now in this question here, none of the numbers actually match up, like the numbers in front of x don't match up, and the numbers in front of y don't match up. So this is where we're going to need to start multiplying our equations by certain numbers. So, in this question here, I can either make x is equal, or the y's equal to each other, and I think it would be easier actually if I make the y's equal to each other. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to times the top equation by 2, and the bottom equation by 3. And that will make both of the y's equal 6. But when I times the equation by 2, I need to times the whole equation by 2, or the whole equation by 3. So let's get started. It's going to be 6x plus 6y equals 18. And on the second equation, it's going to be 12x um, plus 6y equals 13 times 3 is 39. Lovely. So we'll call this equation 1 and this equation 2. Now I think this time I'd like to do equation 2, take away equation 1, because that will lead me to whole numbers. So I'm going to do equation 2, take away equation 1. Now let's move that over here actually. Equation 2, take away equation 1. So 12x take away 6x, that would be 6x. 6y take away 6y, that's no y's left. So that's eliminated the y variable because we've made it equal to each other and then subtracted it. Equals 39 take away 18. Well, 9 take away 8 is 1. Uh, 3 take away 1 is 2. So it's 21. Lovely. So we've now got 6x equals 21. Now we'll divide by 6. So x is going to equal 3.5. Lovely. So there's our answer for x. And then to work out our answer for y, we now need to plug it into one of our initial equations. Let's maybe pick this one up here. 3 times 3.5 is 10.5. Add 3y equals 9. So if I take away the 10.5 onto the other side, I get 3y equals 1.5. Uh, minus 1.5 because it's 9 take away 10.5. And then divide by 3 and you get minus a half. So there we are, that's our answer for this question here. x equals 3.5, y equals minus a half. Lovely, there we are, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Right. 
Right, okay, in this question here, again, we don't have any of the x's matching up and we don't have any of the y's matching up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose which out of the x or the y's I'm going to make equal to each other. And I think it will be easier to make the y's equal to each other in this question here by making the y's 12. So what I'm going to do with the top one is times it by 3 and the bottom one I'm going to times it by 2 to make the y's 12. So times in the top equation by 3 I get 9x plus 12y equals 18. On the bottom equation it's going to be 10x plus 12y equals 22. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll call this equation 1 and this equation 2. And we'll do t equation 2 take away equation 1. So it's going to be 10x take away 9x, that'll be just x. And 22 take away 18, that'll be 4. So we get x equals 4 straight away. No more rearranging needed for this one, just x equals 4. Let's now go back to one of the initial equations and plug it in. I'll plug it into the first one, 12 plus 4y equals 6. Take away the 12 onto the other side and you get 4y equals minus 6 and then y equals minus 1 half, 1 and a half. So there we are, that's the answer to this question here. x equals 4, y equals minus 1.5. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so looking at this question here, I think if we make the x's equal each other, then that will keep the numbers lower. So uh, let's times the first one by 3 and the second one by 2. So uh, I'm going to get 6x minus 12y equals 57. And on the second equation, it's going to be 6x plus 10y equals 2. Lovely. So we'll call this equation 1. And this equation 2. So let's do equation 1 take away equation 2. And we'll get 6x take away 6x is no x's. Lovely. Minus 12y take away 10y. So minus 12y take away 10y. That will give us minus 22y equals 57 take away 2 is 55. So if I now divide by minus 22, that will give me y equals minus 2.5. So there we are, that's my answer for y. Now putting that back into one of the equations at the top there, so 2x, and then that will be plus 10 equals 19. It will be plus 10 because this is, um, this is minus 4 times minus 2.5, so that's plus 10. Take away the 10 onto the other side and you get 2x equals 9 and x equals 4.5. Lovely, so there we are, that's the answer for this question here. x equals 4.5, y equals minus 2.5. You may have done these questions a different way, but you should get those same answers still. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so for this one here, I think it will keep the numbers lower if we make the x's equal each other. So I'm going to times the top one by 5 and the bottom one by 2. So it's going to be 10x plus 35y equals, I'll do this bit on the calculator, 31 times 5, just so I don't make a mistake, 155. The next one is going to be times in by 2, so that'll make it 10x minus 6y equals 32. Okay, so we'll call this equation number 1 and this equation number 2. So uh, we now do one equation, take away the other. So we'll do equation 1, take away equation 2. So 10x take away 10x is no x's, lovely. 35y take away minus 6y, oh, hold on, 35y... This is the difficult bit. Minus, because that's the operation between the two equations. The number minus 6y. Okay, how do you take away a negative number? You add it. So it's going to be 41y equals, and then the subtraction between these two, 123. 
So now we'll divide both sides by 41, and we'll get y equals uh, 3. That's nice and easy in the end there. Let's put it back into one of these equations. Let's put it into maybe the second one. 5x minus 9 equals 16. Add the 9 onto the other side and you get 25. And x will equal 5, therefore. And there we are. That's the answer to this question here. x equals 5, y equals 3. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, I think it'd be easier if this question would be if we make the y's equal each other. It will keep the numbers lower anyway. So if we times the top one by 3 and the bottom one by 2, we'll therefore get 21x minus 6y equals 123. And on the second one, it's going to be 8x plus 6y equals 22. Let's call this equation 1 and this equation 2. Now, on this equation here, we've got minus 6y and 6y. And hopefully you can remember how you cancel out a 6y and a minus 6y. You do that by adding your equations together. So, 21x add 8x, that would be 29x. Minus 6y add 6y, that will make it 0. And then 123 add 22 will give us 145. So let's do the division there. 145 divided by 29. Um, 145 divided by 29. 5. Lovely. x equals 5. Lovely, let's now put this back into one of the uh, equations at the top. Let's put it back into the second one. Uh, 20 plus 3y equals 11. Subtract your 20 onto the other side and you get 3y equals minus 9. Divide by 3y equals minus 3. And there we are. That's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's get started on this one. I think it'll be easier if we make the y letters equal each other. So I'm going to times the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 5. So it's going to be 8x plus 10y equals 26. And on the bottom one, it's going to be 15x add 10y equals, I'll do this bit on the calculator just so I don't make a mistake, 27 27 times 5 gives me 135. Oh, sorry, that's not plus 10, that's minus 10. Okay, so this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. So, with the 10 y's, how are we going to cancel these out? We're going to cancel them out by adding the equations together. So, because 10 y add minus 10 y will give us 0, we're going to add the equations together. So, 8x add 15x, that's 23x. 10y add minus 10y, it cancels out. And 135 add 26 gives us 161. Now we'll just divide both sides by 23 to get x equals divided by 23, 7. Lovely, x equals 7 for this question here. And let's put this back into one of the equations. Let's put it back into the second one, I think. 21 will be 3 times 7 minus 2y equals 27. Let's uh, add the 2y onto the other side and take away the 27. So that would be minus 6. So y equals minus 3. So there we are. y is minus 3. x equals 7. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, in this question, a little bit different to normal because the x's and the y's are the other way around. But let's not let that put us off. Let's uh, have a look at what we can turn 
our letters into. I think it'll be easier if we make the x's equal each other. So I'm going to times the bottom one by 4 and keep the top one the same. So 5y minus 4x equals 8. And the bottom one, multiplying that by 4, will give us 4y add 4x equals 28. We'll call this equation 1 and this one equation 2. And how will it be easier to, can to cancel out the x's here? Well, if I add my equations together, because one's positive, one's negative, they will cancel out. So it's going to be 9y equals 36, because the x's will cancel. So y here is equal to 4. So therefore, just looking at the second equation, 4 plus x equals 7, it's obvious there that x equals 3. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer to this question. Okay, let's move on to this question here then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here, I think it would be easier if we make the y's equal each other. So I'm going to leave the first one alone, but times the bottom one by 2. So that's going to make it 3x minus 4y equals 8. And the next one is going to be 10x minus 4y equals 22. Now this is a difficult question, one that we haven't seen so far, where we've got two letters that are matching up that are both negative. Now in fact, how are we going to cancel these out? Minus 4y and a minus 4y. Well, it's definitely not going to be by adding them together, because that would just give you minus 8y. If we minus them, then the second one will become a positive, and then you've got a negative add a positive, um, or a negative and a positive, which will cancel out. So in this question here, I'm going to subtract them. I'm going to do equation 2, take away equation 1. Basically, the rule is, when they're the same sign, you subtract them, and when they're a different sign, you add them. So in this case, they're the same sign, so I'll subtract my equations. So 10x take away 3x is 7x. In this question here in the middle, it's going to be minus 4y, subtract, because that's the operation between the two equations, the value minus 4y. And how do you subtract uh, a negative number? You add the negative number, you add the value of it, and then that will cancel out to be 0. So 0 in the middle there, and then it's 2 take away 1, so it's 22 take away 8, which is 14. So x here is equal to 2. Now that we know that x is equal to 2, let's put it into one of the equations. Let's pick the top one. 3 times the 2 will give us 6 minus 4y equals 8. Let's add the 4y onto the right-hand side and subtract the 8. That will give us minus 2. So it will be minus 1 half equals y. So there we are. y equals minus 1 half. x equals 2. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Great, so this is going to be using exactly the same technique we saw in the previous question, so hopefully we're good at this one. So we're going to times the first one by 2, leave the second one alone. So it's going to be 16x minus 8y equals 14. And the second equation we leave alone, so it's 12x minus 8y equals 6. Now, we've got the 8y's being both negative here, so we're going to subtract the equations. I'm going to do equation 1, take away equation 2. So it's 16x take away 12x, which is 4x, minus 8y, subtract, because that's the operation between the two equations, the value minus 8y, and because the double negative here will make it a plus minus 8y add 8y will make 0. So that y's will cancel when we subtract. And then it's going to be 14 take away 6, which is 8. So therefore x equals 2. And then plug it into one of the equations. Let's pick the first one. So 8 times the 2 will give us 16 minus 4y equals 7. We'll move the 4y onto the other side and move the 7 onto the left. So that's subtract 7 from both sides. That will give us 9. So it's 9 divided by 4 as the value for y. I'm just going to leave it as y 
as 9 over 4. So there we are, x equals 2, y equals 9 over 4. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, in this question, I think it'd be easier if we times the top one by 3 to make the y's equivalent, and then we can add the equation. So it's going to be 15 watt x add 3y equals 63, and we'll leave the second one alone. So it's going to be x minus 3y equals 9. So we're back to this situation where we've got one positive, one negative, so we'll add our equations together. We call this equation 1, call this equation 2, and we'll add equation 1 and equation 2. So it's going to be 16x. The y's will cancel out because one's positive, one's negative, so when you add them together they will cancel. So it's then 63 add 9, that'll make it 72. So now divide both sides by 16, and I'll grab my calculator for this one. 72 divided by 16, and you get 4.5. So x equals 4.5. And then let's uh, put it back into one of the equations. Maybe it might be easier to put into the second one. So 4.5 minus 3y equals 9. Let's add the 3y onto the right-hand side and subtract the 9y onto the left. So that would be minus 4.5 now, uh, because 4.5 take away 9 is minus 4.5, and then divide by 3, so that will make y equals minus 1.5. And there we are. That's the answer for this question here. x equals 4.5, y equals minus 1.5. Let's move on to the next one, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, in this question I think it would be easier if we just times the bottom one by 5, so that will make it 10x minus 5y equals 35. And I'll leave the top one alone, 3x plus 5y equals 4. So we've now got equation 1 and equation 2. One with a positive 5y, one with a negative 5y, so I think it would be easier here if we add our equations together. Well, certainly that will cancel out the y's anyway. So 3x add 10x, that'll make it 13x. 5y add minus 5y, that'll make it 0. And then 4 add 35 is 39. Divide by 13 and we get x equals 3. And then if I put it back into the second of the two simultaneous equations, 2 times the 3 will give me 6, minus y equals 7, so y must therefore be minus 1. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so I'm going to solve this one in a slightly different way to normal. Now, it says on the top here that y is equal to 3x. So what I'm going to do in the second equation is write, instead of y, 3x. Because the two things are equal to each other, that's what it says. y equals 3x. So where it says y, I'm going to write 3x. So, substituting the first one into the second one, I'm going to get 7x plus y, but I'm going to not write y, I'm going to write 3x, because they're equal. 3x equals 25. So what I've done here is I've not solved it by simultaneous equations by method of elimination, I've done it by substitution. So simplify this together, and it gives us 10x equals 25, and divide by 10, and you get x equals 2.5. So now we'll work out what y is. I think I'll use the first one. y equals 3 times 2.5, which is 7.5. So there we are. That's our answer to this question. 2.5 and 7.5 by substitution. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question, I think it would be easier to make the y's equal to each other. So I'll times the top one by 3 and the bottom one by 2. So top one by 3 will give us 9x plus 6y equals 16.5. Uh, and the bottom one by 2, that'll make us 10x minus 6y 
equals minus 26. Okay, so we have equations 1 and equations 2. We've made the y letters equal to each other. One's positive, one's negative. So in that case, we add the simultaneous equations together. So it's going to be 19x. And then I'll grab my calculator just to make double sure. So it's going to be uh, minus 26 add 16.5. That gives us minus 9.5. And then divide by 19 and we get x equals minus 0.5. Putting that back into the first of the simultaneous equations, min 3 times minus 0.5 will be minus 1.5. Add 2y equals 5.5. Add your 1.5 onto the other side and we get uh, 6.57. And divide by 2 and we get y equals 3.5. So there we are. That's the answer for this question here. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Right then, let's have a go at this one. So in this question here, I think it'd be sensible to make the y's equal to each other. This question is very similar to the previous one, isn't it? So we'll make the y's equal times top one by three, bottom one by two. So that'll make it 9x plus 6y equals 21. And on the bottom, it's going to be 8x plus 6y equals 30. So I have simultaneous equation number one and simultaneous equation number two. The, oh, sorry, this is a minus. We have a 6y and a minus 6y, so we can cancel them out by adding the simultaneous equations together. 9x add 8x is 17x. 6y add minus 6y will cancel out and add these together and you get 51. So divide by 17 and you get x equals 3. So let's substitute this into one of the simultaneous equations. Let's pick the first one. That would be 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2y equals 7. Move the 9 onto the other side, and you get minus 2. So y equals minus 1. So there we are. That's the answer to this question here. OK, let's move on to the next one. Oh, a graph-based one here. So pause the video and give this question here a go. Okay, so in this question it says the graphs with equations 3y add 2x equals a half and 2y minus 3x equals minus 113 over 12 have been drawn on the grid below. Using the graphs, find estimations for the solutions of the simultaneous equations of this one and this one. So, solutions to simultaneous equations are also where the graphs intersect. I'm just going to zoom in to this graph here now. It looks like it's roughly going to be about 2.25, I'd say about 2, yeah, I think it's exactly 2.25 here. So x equals 2.25, so that's the x-axis intersection point, and y equals, this pen is going a bit slowly here, uh, y will equal... about minus 1.35, so I'll zoom back out again, minus 1.35. So there we are, so the intersections of the graphs of two simultaneous equations are the solutions to those simultaneous equations. So the solutions to these are going to be x equals 2.25 and y equals minus 1.35. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so part A, solve these simultaneous equations. So I think what I'll do is I'll times the top one by 4 and the bottom one by 3 to make the x's equal to each other. So that's going to be 12x add uh, 20y equals 7, no, not 70, 14 times 4, let's do that on the calculator so I don't make a mistake, 56, and let's do the bottom one times 3, 12x, 
add 9y equals 12. Okay, so now we've got equation number 1 and equation number 2. We're now going to subtract them because we've got 12x's on both of them and they're both positive. So where they're both positive, we're going to subtract. So 12x take away 12x is 0x's. 20y take away 9y is 11y. And 56 take away 12 is going to be 44. So therefore y equals 4. And how do we work out x? We put it back into one of the equations. Let's put it back into the second one that looks a bit easier. So the second one is going to be um, 4 times x is just 4x plus 3 times y. That would be 12 equals 4. Subtract your 12 onto the other side. You get 4x equals minus 8 and then x equals minus 2. So it's x equals minus 2, y equals 4. are the answers for part a. The answers for part B, write down the coordinate of the intersection of the two lines whose graphs are equations um, 3x plus 5y equals 14 and 4x plus 3y equals 4. Well, they're exactly the same equations to part A, so the coordinate is going to be minus 2 for x going first and 4 for y. And there we are. So the coordinate of intersection will be the same as the solutions to the simultaneous equations algebraically. And moving on to the next question, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's get started on this one then. So if we multiply the top one by 3 and the bottom one by 4, then that's going to make the x is equal on both of them. So it's going to be 12x plus 9y equals 18. And the second one will be 12x plus 20y equals minus 4. So let's call the top one equation number 1 and the bottom one equation number 2. And we'll do, um, to make the y's equal, we've got 12x and 12x, so they need to be subtracted um, because they're the same uh, sign. And we'll do 2 take away 1 to leave us with an 11x eventually. So 12x take away 12x is 0. 20y take away 9y is 11y, and minus 4 take away, min take away 18 will give us minus 22. So here we get y equals minus 2. Substitute it back into one of the equations. We'll pick the top one. 4x minus 6 equals 6. So 4x equals 12. So x equals 3. So there we are. That's the answers for these two questions here. OK, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question here, it says the diagram shows two straight lines. The equations of the lines are y equals x minus 1 and 2x plus 3y equals 12. Write down the solution of the simultaneous equations. Well, the solution of these simultaneous equations, because these are matching up to the graphs, will just be the intersection of the graphs. So it's going to be the coordinate 3, 2. So the answer to this question is 3, 2. And there we are. That's all we have to do for that question. OK, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question, I think it would be easier if we turn the y's on this equation equal to each other. So times top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3. So it's going to become 10x plus 6y equals 18. And the bottom one will be 21x minus 6y equals 75. So we'll have equations 1 and equations 2. And in this case, because we've got a 6y and a minus 6y, one positive, one negative, we should cancel them out by adding them together. So that would be 31x. That will cancel out. And I'll do it on the calculator just to make sure I don't make a mistake. 75 add 18 gives me 93. So therefore, x will equal 3. 
Substitute x equals 3 back into one of these equations. I'll pick the top one. That will make it 15 because 5 times 3 is 15 plus 3y equals 9. Subtract the 15 onto the other side and we get y equals minus 6 and then y equals minus 2. So there we are, that's the solutions here. x equals 3, y equals minus 2. Moving on to part b, p is the point of intersection of the lines with equations 5x plus 3y equals 9 and 7x minus 2y equals 25. Write down the coordinate of p. Well, the point of intersection of two simultaneous equations will be the same as solving them algebraically. So the point of intersection is just going to be 3 minus 2. And there we are. That's the answer for this question here. And that's all we're going to go through in this video here today. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully you found doing all these simultaneous equations have improved your ability to do simultaneous equations. Come back and visit this video at some other point in time in the future. And uh, best of luck for your GCSE revision. Thanks very much for watching.